iPhone versus Tesla, Apple versus Tesla, who's better? iPhone 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 20, 20, 99. Now, iPhone 99 versus what Tesla's doing. Now, shout outs to my brother Marcus here, but I want to make a good observation. I feel, and I know, and I think I believe that everybody, when they critique Tesla, they always got something to say about delivery dates or never coming out with a product. And I'm going to show you the inconsistency that exists in their opinions when they actually review other different products and services. Like, other companies don't deliver, but they kind of just let it go, right? They're like, it's okay. But you know what? Let's get to the video. I'm going to show and point this out because I find this to be very interesting. It's not only him. A lot of people do this, but everyone hates Tesla. Let's get it. Upgrade cycle. So he's going to be going through the iPhone 16, all right? iPhone 16, 15, 14, 13, like what's the major difference, right? But they're like, true innovation. I'm so excited for the revolution of technology. And the phones will be like, a new camera and that's it. Like, come on, my guy. Let's go. So there's not a lot actually physically new with this year's iPhone, but it's not nothing. So the iPhone 16 looks a little different from the iPhone 15. There was a moment in time not that long ago where Apple removed the headphone jack and then there was a ton of speculation about them maybe removing all the ports and all the buttons. But all oh, snaps, they removed the jack. Oh, snaps. Ain't much change, but there's something. This is true technology, true, true evolution and, and, and innovation right here on the ground with Apple. They were going to remove all the jacks, but they didn't. So why don't we criticize them for not doing that, right? But we're going to let them go as they always do. Let's continue. But instead, it's gone the opposite way, and they've added the action button from last year's pros and yet another button called camera control, which we'll get to in a second. Aesthetically, though, there are some really poppy new colors and the camera control. Oh, my gosh. True innovation at its finest. Slightly larger protruding cameras lined up on the back of the phone. And OK, I know everyone puts a case on their phone, so this is probably nothing. But I think this is the wobbliest slab phone I have ever seen, or at least that I can remember. But either way, the rest of the general shape and flat sides and dimensions of this phone are basically the same. It's a very familiar iPhone. The Pro phones are even harder to tell apart, but they do have new displays, and they're great. So they're slightly bigger, 6.3 and 6.9 inches, respectively. And the bezels are, I think, actually noticeable. 6.3 and 6.9? Wow. This is true. This is true innovation. Groundbreaking stuff right here. Really thinner and still even all the way around. So both sized phones are just a little larger than last year and fit bigger batteries too. And we should talk about batteries. So when Apple unveiled all these new phones, they made kind of a big deal about how they all have slightly larger capacity batteries across the board, and that the new Pro Max would have the longest battery life ever in an iPhone, which, I mean, I would hope that your newest, most expensive, most high-tech, biggest phone ever is the longest battery, but still, they didn't give any numbers to support that. So we don't actually know how much larger in milliamp hours the battery is or how much. Wait, hold on, what? Because I could have sworn we talked about Tesla not providing details for the robo event, for the Wii robot event. You know, Elon and them, they always don't provide detail, but you know, Apple does the same thing. They make a statement, provide no details, but it's okay. Y'all figure it out, right? longer the battery actually lasts. All I have to go on is Apple's website's comparison tool, which only measures in video playback hours. So it has the iPhone 16 at 22 hours of video playback up from 20. And the 16 Pro Max is all the way up to 33 hours versus last year's big phones, 29. Unfortunately, this means almost nothing to me because that video playback can be optimized with like cores on a chip, who cares? But now the phones are out and people have gotten them and torn them apart and measured them. Turns out the batteries are about 6% larger across the board and 9% larger on the Pro. And I have found battery life about the same as last year, to be honest. Like not noticeably better, not noticeably worse. I end up saying a lot of the same things about it. Like it lasts me a whole day on the Pro, heavy use, no problem. What actually did make a difference to me though is faster charging. Less people are talking about it, but all of the new iPhone 16 lineup supports up to 45 watt wired charging now. As a VFX artist.
Oh, hold on, guys. Fell asleep. Hold on, my bad. My bad. Let's get back to this new uh, groundbreaking technology from Apple, from the iPhone 16 and 16 Pro and the 16 Pro Max with different bezels and uh, a brighter screen and longer battery life on the playback. Apple never talks about fast charging. They never brag about like how fast you can go zero to 100 or zero to 80%. But when their phones do get slightly faster at charging, it's pretty nice. It's too bad it doesn't come with the fast charging brick in the box, but I have a fast charger. I am loving the new fast charging in bursts. And also MagSafe supports with the new puck up to 25 watt wireless charging instead of 15. On the inside, these phones have the A18 and A18 Pro chips. And again, I'd be lying if I told you I just noticed any difference right out the box. And I think basically anybody would, but yes, they will benchmark 10, 20, 30% faster depending on what you ask it to do. But the extra power is definitely more about fringe activities, high-end stuff, future-proofing. I was actually more curious though to find that all of the models have eight gigs of RAM now. So the pro phones and the non-pro phones, which usually have different amounts, no doubt this is because the Apple intelligence features when they eventually ship are going to need every last Wait, hold on. The Apple intelligent feature. This is the whole key to buying the iPhone 16. We about to have AI just on the telephone. And it hasn't dropped. So you bought the phone, but there's no AI. Kind of like when people buy the Model 3, the Model Y, just a Tesla vehicle, and it doesn't have the FSD to level five autonomy, right? Like people always be like, you said you was going to deliver the product. You said, and let me know, is artificial intelligence on the iPhone to maybe, you know, organize your voice memos more difficult than real world artificial intelligence where a car is driving itself at 70 miles per hour? Which one's a little bit more complicated? And what happened to Apple? I thought Apple was supposed to drop an Apple car so they dropped the phone on 16 and it doesn't have the AI yet to be continued. No smoke for Apple. Okay. It's making sure you, you keep the same standard across all companies and industries, but okay. I understand it might be a little bit harder to do it for the iPhone than it is for an actual car. It's a bit of it, but for now, Hey, you can enjoy more Ram for all your other apps too. iOS 18 launched. Hey, Hey, no artificial intelligence. That's the reason why you're going to buy the new iPhone 16. But hey, it's OK. You can enjoy more RAM <laughs> with these new phones, too. So I made an entire separate video about iOS 18, all the new features. That's what's rolling out to everybody's older iPhones as well now, too. So you can put your home screen icons wherever you can color your home screen icons. You can change your lock screen shortcuts, basically customize the iPhone a bit more than ever before. You could argue this makes a bigger difference to the iPhone than any of the other hardware stuff. But yeah, I'll, I'll link that full video below. But speaking of new hardware, there is one other new button. So I guess nobody at Apple is allowed to call it a button, but I'm gonna call it a button. So this is the new camera control button on all of the new iPhone 16s. I've used and played with and thought a lot about this button. And actually it all comes down to smartphone cameras in general. My take is that Smartphone cameras are like headphones EQ. Like you get a new pair of headphones out the box and you listen to them, you don't like them. Oh no, no, don't worry. That's just one of the ways that these headphones can sound. You can change the EQ and it'll sound like a totally different pair of headphones. And that's also true with smartphone cameras this year more than ever with the iPhone. So the default photos from the iPhone look more iPhone-y than ever. Remember how every year in the blind smartphone camera test, the iPhone loses because it kind of overly brightens all the shadows and it doesn't have as much contrast. Yeah, it's still doing that, especially in photos with people in it. But the purpose of this new button has been made very clear, and it's kind of a theme for the whole phone, which is, well, camera control. This year, Apple's kind of just giving back control of the camera to users. Bro, what? That's innovation. That's more innovation than Tesla. You know, Tesla, they don't innovate nothing. They don't do anything. Reusable rockets, that's nothing. That's child play. Did you see the new iPhone? It has a new camera button. Did you see the new iPhone? It has artificial intelligence, but it doesn't have it yet. It hasn't released yet, but that's the reason why you should get 16. And that's what majority of the presentation was for the iPhone 16, but it hasn't came out yet, but it's okay. We have this button, but we're not able to call the button a button. 
that's the innovation coming out of Apple. And it's revolutionary. It's massively different from the iPhone 15. It's massively different from the iPhone 14. I mean, it's true innovation at its highest extent. Uh, we like nobody else. This is some stuff that we never seen before ever in the market and Tesla, they're not delivering anything. There are products and their artificial intelligence. I mean, it's delayed. It's late. It's not revolutionary. It's not like what we have here at Apple, a new camera, a new bezel, a new LCD screen, a new camera. You could take pictures like this or like this and then a button click and you could click it like that. And that's revolutionary. That's something to get excited about. And whatever Tesla says, they always lie. They never provide it at the end of the day, whether it be a van or whether it be robots. None of that is revolutionary. What Apple has in the iPhone 16, then that's coming out in 17 and the 18 and the 19 and the 20 and the 21, no charging points, no volume, <laughs> no screen, the iPhone 19. <laughs> Yeah, cut it out, man. Yeah, y'all need to start criticizing Apple the way y'all be criticizing test innovation. That's a joke, Ting Man. I call that in a wasting. I'll catch you on the next one. iPhone 16 versus Tesla. Who wins at true innovation, my guy? Hmm? Apple car, where you at? Artificial intelligence on the iPhone 16. Where you at? Deliver something, please. Because that's what you said the iPhone 16 was about. Right? AI. The latest. But you don't have it. Put some respect on Tesla's name. Everyone loves to hate Tesla. But it's electric. See you on the next 